Can you just explain what what happened here and what you know? Does this change the way you think about dye? Yeah, no, it doesn't change. I've always hated dye. I mean, it started out as like supposed to be decentralized. Okay, nothing that has governance can be decentralized for very long. So, Circle has the majority of the maker tokens. They did this strategically. Circle owns USDC. To gain a competitive advantage, they went ahead and bought the ever-living crap out of maker tokens. They now own the controlling vote. So now the centralization that make the circle likes, they can now start to put the squeeze and do the same things on die. Okay. So that's one risk with anything that has governance, by the way, governance is often a joke because with governance, yeah, everyone can vote, but all that means is now uh, the founders get together and they say, Hey dev, everyone voted, go ahead and change the code. Okay. So now the guy goes in and he updates the code. Right, they run their own little private test net. Hopefully, they got additional audits, and then they launch the code and and upgrade the contracts or whatever. And now, hopefully, everyone's happy because everyone voted for that change to begin with. But somebody can literally access the code and change it is the central point of failure. It could actually happen without a vote, just because everyone votes. Look, that dev team can still go in there if they were nefarious. They could just go change it right now if they wanted to. You don't actually need the vote for those guys to do that. You're just trusting that they're going to do the right thing and not make any changes unless everyone votes, right? So you do have multiple risks now with DAI. You have something that's not immutable because it has governance, but now you also have something that's highly centralized because it has governance. And then um, one of the other things I don't like about DAI is its liquidation mechanism absolutely sucks. Um, when people mint die against their ETH, they they put up ETH as collateral. They mint some die. They have to put themselves at 130% collateral health minimum, and then they can choose to over collateralize however much they want to go. But if their value falls to 130%, they get liquidated. They lose 30% of their bag. Okay, you don't see see that with LUSD because it's 110% collateral health with LUSD. So the most you can ever lose in LUSD is 10% of your bag. And that's only if you're choosing the way under collateralize. Okay. So Maker during a liquidation wrecks people way more than it has to. But the reason it's like that is because of their, um, their auction process. So when something gets liquidated, when ETH gets liquidated in Maker protocol, it goes up for a six-hour liquidation auction. And then people can choose to bid on that. But in a black swan event, you could literally see a scenario where nobody bids on it during that six hours and the price continues to go down. And if you see one vault become under collateralized, right? If the price of ETH drops 30% during that six hour window, you would actually see a vault or a number of vaults start to actually no longer back the value of DAI. So if DAI has a collateral health of like, 300% right now, but the lowest collateralized vaults start to like go be literally under collateralized and nobody's buying that debt. You could see an event where die is no longer backed and everybody realizes that there's a problem because of the six hour liquidation window. And they start running to the running to Uniswap to start dumping their die very quickly. And you, that's how these death spirals happen. All right. It's dangerous. And look, DAI is supposed to be really good. Like, I used to really like it. It's like, oh, this thing is decentralized. Anybody can mint these things. It's cool. But when you start to get in the weeds of it, the six-hour liquidation window is unnecessary and could actually present a scenario if ETH was to drop by 30% where things start to become under-collateralized. That is a risk. The other risk is is Maker um, having the governance system that now Circle controls. And it's not immutable. They can just change the code at any time. And what does it say here? They even complied with a court order. Okay. And they took money back from a guy. What? It's bad. 
It's really bad. And LUSD from Liquidy, they recognized all this stuff years ago. And I've been shouting for like a year and a half now, maybe two, that Liquidy is like dye, but on steroids, it's much, much safer. It's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. 100% governance free, fully immutable, no admin keys. You can never change the code. Fully backed, fully redeemable at any time. The collateral health of the system is always going up. It's amazing. And then I see Richard Hart and he, you know, there's a wallet out there that holds a lot of die. And I like, I almost lose some sleep over that. It bothers me a lot. What happens if this happens here? Uh, some sort of court order, some sort of weird thing. The SEC doesn't like, you know, doesn't like him or wants to do something. And then Maker just decides to fork him out. Like, fork you, Richard Hart. Look, they could do that to him. It's dangerous. Now, people say, well, look at LUSD. It doesn't have thick liquidity. It's its own liquidity pool. People need to understand, first off, there's curve, and there's like hundreds of millions of dollars worth of liquidity, and all the stable coins are paired together, so anybody can get out. But people also need to understand that the liquidity system itself is a liquidity pool. Every single token that's minted can be redeemed back for a dollar's worth of ETH. So even if you go to Uniswap and you're like, oh, wow, there's only $20 million in here. Okay, cool. But if there's $150 million LUSD, there's actually $150 million worth of ETH that can be gotten back out of it. It's its own liquidity pool. So it's it like, yes, you want to see big, thick liquidity everywhere, but that's only part of the picture. Very interesting. Yeah, this is a, I wonder how many people be switching out of die. I wonder if the SAC wallets will make any moves. Uh, fork you, Richard Hart. They could, that would be epic though. I mean, it'd be bad obviously, but epic if they, if there was the Richard Hart fork of die and uh, with, with all the SAC stuff. So assuming that's who has the SAC wallets, right? 